Hello my soccer universe, last video from the FCON and it's the host who in the end surprisingly but I would also say deservedly won the entire tournament at home, the first nation since Egypt in 2006. To do so in probably one of the best FCON finals that I can remember, I mean just by pure amount of goals, three, that's not very FCON uh, and before whenever the Ivory Coast have reached the final it always ended a nil nil and the penalty shootout and they won it only if the penalty shootout went epic so in that sense yeah this was uh, amazing um, it was not the back and forth final that you wanted to have but it was a really good final that was dominated by the winners but they had to climb a pretty steep hill uh, with Nigeria and I think it was a fitting end to the AFCON overall we also had a third place matchup uh that again went to penalties uh but you know after 90 minutes one could uh, assume that it was the third penalty shootout for south africa in a row um overall i really enjoyed the afcon I, I always say this and i always do uh but the afcon is one of those two tournaments that i think i really would like to experience once for myself in uh, there and then and I don't mean necessarily in Northern Africa I think it would be even Sub-Saharan Africa I think it has a special feel there too it doesn't mean that for the next time when it is played in Morocco uh, I will not enjoy it as much but I always feel that when it goes um, Sub-Saharan Africa there's a very very special vibe to the, the entire tour to tournament so whenever I watched it there um, I at least got that one so this is probably one of those bucket list uh, things that I wanna do maybe at some time in the future watch an FCON right there on site but let's talk about uh, the games I mean the third place playoff South Africa win it on penalties and uh, get a third place this is the best showing in forever I want to say in 2000 they also finished in third, third, third place. So uh, a really, really good. However, they were not a better, better team on the, on the day. That was the DRC. The DRC had more of the game, had probably the better chances without being it overwhelming. Yes, did not see all that much from that game. I was still very much uh, taken over by what happened in the Bundesliga and there will become a video on that as well. But I saw at least the full penalty shoe shooter, which kind of was fun uh, to do um, because South Africa went first I think the DRC elected to go second which is something you should not do although I think as of late has been turning around in any any case Mokwena misses the first penalty and then every shooter thereafter really without fail convert however Mbemba who can win it for the DRC there sees his, uh, sees his, his, his one saved and then uh, the next two, Ap uh, Apolilis and Vissa, convert. Julu also converts, but Elia uh, says another one saved. And so South Africa gained a third place. I think both teams really enriched the tournament. Maybe South Africa even a tad more, although they had now three penalty shootouts in a row, which, yeah. On the other side, the DRC have not won a game until they reach the quarters where they beat Guinea 3-1 in probably a pretty uh, dominant performance as well. It was really hard for me to split. I actually probably would have liked the DRC for once a teeny bit more because I thought they were a little bit more convincing team. But on the other side, South Africa beat Morocco. So that should also count for something. Speaking of Morocco, I think uh, the Cote d'Ivoire or Ivory Coast, they are truly appreciative. And you could see it also in the celebrations after the game. Uh, that only because Morocco won the last group stage game, that they were still alive in the tournament. And I heard a mild, mild, mild accounts uh, that this was also expressed uh, throughout the country. Merci Morocco, merci Morocco, merci Morocco. Because it would not have happened. And Morocco then even went out to South Africa. Uh, sadly, pro, 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 um, from the upper point of view. But yeah, you see all it in the celebrations. They had a Moroccan flag, flag there as well. And the next tournament being hosted host in Morocco. So there were officials from Morocco there too. I think there's a new relationship between those two countries that has been made. The final itself, I mean, rocking stadium. From uh, Alassane Ouattara. 
who of course is the, the, the stadium is named after the president who is still incumbent there. Yes, he is old or, or, or whatever, but I found it. It's a little bit self-aggrandizing. I honestly, I do not know. Uh, from what I got, I think he is probably a well-liked figure, um, but it seemed a little bit weird to name a stadium after yourself while you're still alive. But hey, so be it. Um, the game itself, I mean, hey, the first half was a pretty rough affair. Uh, it was very physically, and especially Nine Nigeria, they knew that uh, the Kota Kotewa will come and attack. And they went physically. There was an early challenge, I think, from Bessie on uh, Kessie, where he almost dislocated his shoulder. But that was the only thing that Nigeria could bring, because the Cote d'Ivoire was actually the team that dominated throughout the first half. And not only dominated, they were really, really impressive doing that really impressive uh, being in, uh, uh, in the domination. So um, take it for what it is. Uh, they created chances um, left and right. Nothing really huge, except I think there was one shot by Sebastian Alea that went a little, a little before, but they totally were in control. Until from a corner kick uh, that hits Lukman kind of, and then it lampoons into in the box and throws the con out jumps uh, Serge o o o Re and heads it into the net. Completely out of nowhere, 30th minute, Nigeria lead it 1-0. Yes, there was a little bit, uh, as I said, it was very physical. There, uh, there was, for instance, Victor Oseman complaining that he got elbowed at, at one point, but I think it was all par for the course. And I think the referee would have done himself a favor if he would have issued uh, one or the other yellow cards a little bit earlier on. But... That lead at the halftime. Uh, it seemed like, yeah, uh, there's another steep hill, hill to climb because this was, came so out of nowhere for Nigeria that um, either they will eventually succumb to the pressure or this will give them the morality boost and probably they will then, uh, you know, open up a little, a little bit more. Well, honestly, a second half was more of the same of the first half. I also have to say that uh, yes, Nigeria was a little bit more was more sol solid. They knew that more attacks will come. There was a one really great block by uh, Calvin Bessie in there, where you really thought that the Colts Cote d'Ivoire need to score there. Uh, they were looking for for other counters, but in the end, it's a um, corner by Adingra. The Cassie can head head in the 62nd minute for a completely deserved equalizer. I personally, I know. His exit from Milan was not the prettiest, but I was really happy to see Shukran Kessie uh, scoring this goal. And to be honest, from that moment on, there was only one winner. There could only have been one winner, and the winner was the call. Uh, Sebastian Alea had then a bicycle kick that went far uh, wide. That would have been a great winning, winning goal. But in, in the end, it's again a run by Adingra, who puts in a cross and an absolute brilliant piece of skill. Alea pulled, pulled it in. At first, you think this looked weird. This, this looked weird. This was an on goal by Akon. Wasn't, what, what was it? No. If you look at it, he puts his foot high, twists his ankle in such a way that he touches the ball in air with the tip of his boot, underside of, of the boot, to tap it in. An absolute amazing goal. Uh, that is, I think, I think this is one goal that when you see it live, you cannot really appreciate how good this was. But when you see it in re replay, an absolute amazing piece of skill. Sebastian Alea, only second goal in the, in, in the tournament. And yes, he is the one who went through all uh, the French youth national teams, but now declared for the Coco d'Ivoire. And he brings back the trophy to his new home nation, if you would like. Um, they're winning for the third time, equaling now uh, Nigeria. Given where the Cote d'Ivoire are in the current development or current standing within Africa, uh, this comes definitely as a surprise. Because, you know, they were not at, at, at the World Cup. They didn't even make it into the, uh, the, 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 the playoff stage at the last um, tournament. They also got eliminated uh, relatively early. Uh, yeah, this was interesting. This was definitely interesting. Home support, as I said, um, they knew that they should have been eliminated. They knew that they were down and out. They knew that it was Morocco. 
And you could see when Garadel who hood and got the captain's arm on when he was carrying the Moroccan flag there, uh, lifting the trophy. They were very much appreciative of that, but in the end, yeah, it happened. And they move on and are your AFCON winners. Um, having speak, spoken about what the, uh, the other thing, I think it was okay that he went to his team, to, to the team of his nation, to get celebrated. But that he was the front and center within the, uh, the, the, the celebrations. Uh, on top of that, being the second person to lift the trophy. You know, there are players that they deserve that. Yes, it is great for your nation. And again, I do not know how popular Uetara is. But that seemed weird. That seemed really, really, really weird. He also seemed completely out of it because he was just celebrating with the players. He didn't know that he has to give the trophy to them. And it was also weird that Infantino, the CAF president, and Watara, all three of them together, hand, 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 hand the trophy. And really, 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 really weird. But yeah, I think it was a surprising end to a tournament. I mean, again, I think from the semi-final stage on, the Cote d'Ivoire were undeniable. Um, once they got the equalizer against Senegal, they were the better team in the round of 16. They had no business beating Mali in the semis, uh, in, the, in, 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 in the quarters, and they had also no, t no business of getting out of the group stage. So it's kind of this um, weird resume to talk. I think in the end, a deserved win because the way you dominated the final, you really lift up and you knew you should have been out. So you got everything together and you performed well. There is no doubt about that. And from that moment on, I guess I would say it's a deserved win. Also, Nigeria's tactics were probably a little bit too defensive. And yes, they have a Port Portuguese coach, which, which is probably another uh, 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 underreported story from this AFCON. How many African coaches? And now with Emerson Faye, who uh, replaced Gasset, a French guy, it's another African coach that wins the AFCON. I think this is so great to see and I really hope that his position is not permanent. And in a way, while I think it would have been a good appointment to get Hervé Renard in, although he is with the Fran women's French national team, uh, I think it's better to have Emerson Faye right there. You have an African coach from your country. Do that. Do that more often. I think this is definitely what African football needs. More reliance on their coaches. Um, I'm pretty sure that Nigeria will change the coach. I know that Nigeria is very calm and collected in selecting the coaches as always. But I think they should get also a Nigerian coach. Because the last time they won it, they did that too. So uh, I think there has to be a definite way. Overall, this was again a highly enjoyable AFCON. Uh, the one thing that the AFCON has that almost no other tournament can boast this is that it's so level. It is absolutely a level playing field. Where even smaller nations have a really good chance of uh, not only advancing out of the group but making a deep run. I mean, we have talked a whole lot about the Col Cote d'Ivoire, but South Africa, they used to be a giant in Africa back in the late 900s, early 2000s, but they have been on the nose staff ever since. The DRC are a, you know, the sleeping giant of Africa, but uh, I guess there's too much going, going, going on to really build a proper national team, although they definitely would have, have it there. Uh, we see that a team like, uh, for instance, Mali, who has been threatening, still cannot make, make the breakthrough, although they just might. We see that really small teams like Ecuador, Guinea, and especially the Cape Verde Islands uh, take um, a good, uh, you know, a, a lesson that you have a big diaspora in Spain and in Port Portugal, and we take that in to get uh, uh, proper players and make our team stronger. It's all, 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 the, all the funny part, and I'm not, all, not even talking about Mauritania, probably does similar stuff, because Mauritania, they coming out, out, out of nowhere, they survived the group stage. Pretty amazing stuff. For the established nations, this was not a good F, AFCON. Uh, we have to, of course, talk about Ghana and Algeria. Uh, we see so that uh, Egypt and Morocco went out early. It was not an uh, AFCON for the top nations. Even the defending champions, Senegal, moved out early. Um, I want to end this video by looking at the performance ratings that I've created. 
where we see, I mean, uh, we have six teams that uh, come out with an A grade, which is South Africa, who are the best relative performance. So based on pre-tournament expectations, they get a 95% grade. Corti was a winner. Yes, you go high. Um, it was a pretty good performance by you, 94%. The DRC right behind the Nigeria overall poll positive, although probably everyone will be very disappointed they didn't win this tournament because from quarterfinals on, if you looked at the lineup, Nigeria were the favorites, bar none. Angola and Guinea, of course, rounding out the top six. Then we have a bunch of smaller nations, five of those, Cape Verde, Mauritania, uh, Mali, Namibia and Equatorial Guinea, that actually performed quite well. Uh, just, you know, maybe a little bit too early elimination, but they definitely have a very positive tournament. Burkina Faso probably went as expected and the rest is disappointment. We have Cameroon in there. Absolute class, 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 class this nation, but most notably Egypt and Senegal, and then Ghana, Morocco, Tunisia, and all Algeria, as our already see, definitely the biggest disappointments of this tournament. So that was it, last one from the AFCON. Uh, please let me know what you thought about this tournament. Give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. Subscribe to my channel if you want to see more things, and I'll come to back with, uh, to you soon with more things from my soccer universe. Bye! Hey there, I really hope you enjoyed this video and if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you may enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel and hit the little bell icon so you get notified whenever something happens in my soccer universe. And with that, have a wonderful day. Bye!